Hey everyone. Welcome back to Obscure Slooper Presents. This is Howling Six. Howling 6, The Freaks. It's been said that Howling 5 and 6 are the best Howling sequels, but I don't know what series these people were watching. Say what you will about 2 and 3, but at least those knew they were campy. I can't say much for 4 though, since technically it's just a silly retelling of the first one. Howling 5 was pretty boring, so it does bring part 6 a step up, but not by much. What it lacks in boring, it makes up for in what the fuckery. So, I guess it's better than five? The exposition is as follows. Ian is a werewolf, and he's come to America from the UK and travels from town to town while facing his curse. An Englishman named Ian in a werewolf story? Hmm, that sounds familiar. This is all well and good in Howling Town, until you throw in the vampire thing. This movie has a vampire in it. A Howling sequel has a vampire. And he runs a freak show, making him fancy Ian as the latest exhibit. Sound like a barrel of fun? You know, this opening kill victim would make it out a lot better if she would just pick up the pace. Hey, that fall into soft dirt didn't knock her out. Howling Five, you lied to me! Yeah, just take your time. There's no urgency needed here or anything. Are you okay? Oh man, what is this? The intro to Drop Dead Fred all of a sudden? A couple other things that bring this movie a step above the previous installment is the character development and the music choices. Don't get me wrong, I love the Howling Five theme, but other than that, the only soundtrack we're left with is the death sting at every inopportune moment. The music in this one sets the tone pretty well and gives us some lighthearted moments too. I also appreciated that with a smaller cast we could explore the characters. You feel a lot more for the story when you care about what happens to the people in it, so whether you love or hate them, you have some sort of connection. Anyway, our protagonist Ian has made his way to Canton Bluff, where he's looking for a temporary job. He gets the typical movie reaction of, we don't take too kindly to strangers here, but since the town is a population of about 10, he ends up hired by a man named Dewey to repair the local church. Dewey is a preacher there, and he lives with his daughter Elizabeth. She's... Doll of interest! Well, it's about time to be repairing that church. Could it be we need a fixin' up montage? I haven't seen him smile in months. Actually, he said the same thing about you. Zing! Wait, is that even a zing moment? Truly, these two were lost until they found the right werewolf to brighten up their lives. After montaging it up a bit more, the town is visited by the freak show, which makes its way through to advertise their arrival. For some reason, Ian seems unhappy seeing Harker's World of Wonders there. It's run by the vampire. Wait, his name is Harker? Really? You name a vampire character after the non-vampire in Dracula? Besides, using a Dracula character name is almost as cliched as using the name Talbot in a werewolf movie. And yet, surprisingly, that hasn't been done in the Howling franchise. After, uh, some time later, the church has been restored and Ian is invited to have a beer with Dewey and some of the other guys in town. Why don't you come? I mean, you're the most exciting thing that's happened around here since I don't know when. I mean, you're all English and can paint stuff. That's exciting! The carnival can't hope to top that, but let's check in on them anyway. The main players you need to focus on besides Harker are Huggy Bear, Deep Roy, and this Eddie Izzard looking dude. And let's meet Harker himself! You're an incredible specimen. Yes. Yes, I shall paint your lips blue and we shall fight dragons in dungeons or something or other. 
The other freaks have brought in Winston, a fellow who appears to have some sort of disease that gives him scaly skin. I'm not going to attempt to diagnose anything, but I do wonder why it only affects half of him. Anyway, Harker has kidnapped him to try and get him to join them. As long as you're with me, they'll never again call you freak. Yeah, except for the whole freak part of Freak Show. <laughs> wow, and it's such a tempting offer! And while we're discussing the Freak Show, can I just ask what Harker's motivations are? I get why he has a Freak Show. He's a vampire and he can kill people while traveling from town to town. And I get why he'd connect with social outcasts and appeal to them to be with like-minded folks. But why the kidnapping? Why force people to join him? Is there some sort of freak quota he has to meet or something? Wow, Canton Bluff's population suddenly got a lot bigger. Ian was so suspicious earlier that he comes to the carnival with Elizabeth anyway. He might not trust them, but carnival freak shows are just so fun! I don't want to look like this. But you look magnificent. Alright, let's take a look at some more of these magnificent freak show acts. Let's see, we have a uh, light fire and laugh woman, stand in a box with light bulbs gal, brush head prop chick, zombie Halloween prop slayer, clown dude, and a room that traps you for a minute. Yes, these are all things that I associate with freak shows. Whoa, did he like teleport in front of her? <laughs> really? Harker made a cut out of himself so folks would know if they could let their kids in? Why did they give him such a dopey look? Ian is growing uncomfortable with this whole thing, so Harker shows up to set things straight. Without people like me, what would it become of these poor, unfortunate souls? Um, they'd probably live long and happy lives. You know, there's probably easier ways to help people feel better about themselves, right? Oh man, is that a little person playing cards? I take everything I said back. There's no way he could have a normal life after that. My father's asleep. I checked. Hey, their sex can even change the lighting. Oh no, they're fading out of existence. Oh, oh Howling Six, you got me. The next day, Ian decides to take a nap, but he forgets one key thing. <gasps> Oh boy! You'd think that'd be a little higher on your list of priorities, being a werewolf and all. The transformation scene is actually pretty cool, but the final product could have used a little more work. <laughs> what, is he a werewolf or a caveman? I'm not even kidding, this is him fully transformed. If you're waiting for the big reveal, this is it. Given the film's overall stylistic choices, ideas, and yeah, the vampire thing, I question if this was meant to be a Howling sequel at all. The previous sequels may not have had connected stories, but they did seem like part of the same franchise. Even Part 3, as it had a throwaway line about werewolves in California that could be a reference to Howling 1 and 2. And speaking of which, according to Part 3, full moons don't transform werewolves. It is good that this installment tried to be different, but it seems to have gone so far away from the rest of the series that it just seems out of place. Catching wind of Ian's lycanthropy, Harker decides to swoop in with his nefarious plans. Harker and his cronies move in to take him when Elizabeth and Dewey hear the noise and come out. What, what, are, you do, what are you doing to this man? <sighs> Your guest has a little secret. All of us makes a kill. <sighs> oh, so you can just say a spell and that works too. Recognizing that carnival freaks are the foremost werewolf authorities, Dewey and Elizabeth let Harker take Ian away. With Ian now held captive, Harker tries to pinpoint where he knows him from. He could do his whole freaks are cool spiel with him, but he's kinda lost his charm at this point. Instead, he tells him that he killed Elizabeth after he transformed, causing him to decide to stay for fear of hurting anyone else. Seeing as how kidnapping someone and keeping them in a cage falls squarely in the illegal category, the sheriff investigates the carnival. When he speaks to Ian, he reveals that Elizabeth is still alive, but Ian decides to stay anyway? Why? That was his main motivation to stay. What's the point? You think Mr. Harker will let me keep this cat? Don't think he's gonna make me give it up, do you? No. No, I don't. Good. Good. Because I already named him. I'm gonna call it Winston Salem the Second. After Ian and Winston become buddy buddies, Harker opens the freak show's newest attraction. Oh, it's just a werewolf. Yawn! <gasps> Not Winston the Second! 
kind of monster kills off a cat? Fortunately for cat lovers everywhere, Ian is able to control himself as a werewolf and save Sir Fluffums. Yeah, he can control himself as a werewolf, which is exactly why he needs to be locked up to protect his loved ones. Wait, what? He didn't even kill the cat? That's a pretty weak werewolf. He didn't kill the cat. Oh, that just blows my lips. The sheriff still calls shenanigans on this whole situation, so he decides to come back to the carnival later that night. There, he discovers a body in the dumpster, and Harker shows up. Don't move, or I'll shoot your dick in the next county. Oh, God. No, it's too stupid to show yet. <laughs> Repeat shot. He was killed by a mob of rogue tap dancers. This is what I do to friends and freak. Winston Jr., no! Wait, is he even dead? Can we establish some things, please? When Ian decides to take Huggy Bear's just now introduced pet insects, he tries to escape. Unfortunately, the recent murders have been pinned on him, and the town has formed an angry mob. Before they can make wolf kebabs out of him, Elizabeth helps him escape. This fantastic extra is quick to let the other carnies know what's going on. The werewolf's escape! The werewolf's escape! Wait. When someone goes to talk to Harker, we get an actually scary scene. No complaints here. With Ian and Elizabeth on the run, Ian finally reveals his past with Harker. Apparently, the dude was involved with some sort of cult that Ian's father was obsessed with taking down. I'm not sure if his dad was a cop, super religious, or just a vigilante, but maybe I'm putting more thought into this than the filmmakers did. Anyway, Harker killed Ian's family and left him alive, cause I guess he thought it was funnier to curse him than to kill him. That's right, he became a werewolf because a vampire cursed him. Then wait, how come Harker didn't know who he was? He can't have cursed that many people to become werewolves. Is this like a regular thing for him? Does he just get bored and curse people? And if Ian knew who Harker was the whole time, why was he just chilling out at the freak show earlier? Why didn't he act on anything? After having magical, strength-rejuvenating sex, Ian takes off to face Harker. Meanwhile, Elizabeth's dad has found Ian's research on Harker and discovers that he's the real culprit, only for Harker to show up there. To be fair, Harker has a pretty sound argument for his case. You're the one. So fucking what? Why, hello there! After the angry mob pussies out, most likely due to the visible boom mic, Harker decides to take matters into his own hands. And by that, I mean he blows his whole cover by flipping a car. Alright, here's the vampire design in this one. Get ready for it! Wow, it's Panthro! I always knew vampires looked like Thundercats! Oh man, what a day. The mob takes off just as Elizabeth arrives. No! I'll kill you! Alright, I'll use it again. I kick ass for the Lord! Don't fight me. We're brothers. You're not my brother! Oh, is that what he was saying? Ian attempts to kill Harker, but he's kind of sucking at this point. In order to really destroy him, he's got to give in to the beast. And he's gonna need a little help from his friends. Well, gee whiz, it's lucky he can control his powers so well, unlike every other werewolf we've seen. Otherwise, this fight might end a little differently. Well, it is an enticing offer. And the movie ends with Ian carrying Winston into the sunset. Final thoughts. Well, 
It's not as bad as when I first watched it, but it's certainly not my favorite in the Howling franchise. I did appreciate what they did with the characters, and I found Ian to be sympathetic and likable. The vampire thing might have worked if this weren't part of the Howling series, but it just comes a bit out of left field for me. The freak show idea isn't bad either, but again, it just comes off weird for this franchise. If you want a great movie that takes the same concept of a werewolf at a freak show and does it a little better, I'd recommend Wolf Girl aka Blood Moon. It's about hypertrichosis, but it handles the freak show concept a little bit better. As for Howling 6, it's alright. But you know what? I've learned something today. I've got to be brave and face this thing. No more wussing out. I think I killed it. Oh, bogus, man. <sighs> now that that's over with, I can get on with the reviews in peace. Next week, it's part seven. Happy there's dirt in your chili. I need a drink.